62-year-old Pete Johnson is a retired United States Air Force member. A man of faith, he now dedicates his life to uplifting others and empowering young men from broken homes. In 1996, Johnson signed up to become a bone marrow donor. His life carried on with his wife and children until he got a call five years ago asking if he's willing to be a stem cell donor. This thing was divinely ordered from day one and, and it just, when you say magic and all of this other stuff, I, I saw, I did see this as a miracle. I see it was divinely orchestrated that we would be here for such a time as this. The same year Johnson signed up to become a donor, Ramabele Tsolo was born in South Africa. The civil engineer was diagnosed with leukemia. With death ever present, complications from chemotherapy left him in a coma. But a stem cell match was found in America. Five years later, Tsolo and Johnson met each other for the first time in Cape Town. If I were to go do a DNA test right now, <laughs> he's my dad. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how deep it is. Like we are connected, literally. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you saw the man and you saw the eyes and you saw, uh, I couldn't contain myself. I'm sure you saw <laughs> in there. I just couldn't contain myself. Yeah, yeah, it's very emotional. Yeah, yeah. What are your plans for your future? I'm just gonna live life to the fullest because I have a second chance at life. So I need to grab it by the horn. Yeah. The Johnson Tsolo case is an example of how vital bone marrow registries are, more importantly, that people sign up to become donors. The chance of finding a match is for any patient is one in 100,000 of a chance. So, um, and you're more likely to find a match within your own ethnic group. Currently, not just in South Africa, but worldwide, we find more donors of Caucasian descent on our registry. And there's a 72% chance that people of Caucasian descent will find their match. This drops to close to 26% for patients of other ethnic groups. And so it is extremely important that we create the awareness. Finding a perfect match for successful transplants is crucial. Becoming a donor involves providing a DNA sample that is done easily. It's then laboratory tested to identify the tissue makeup and add it to a registry. The process of donation and receiving is minimally invasive. It's like a, um, a blood transfusion, but quicker actually. And then it just, it happened, it was very underwhelming. I thought like things are going to happen, you know. But literally it was like a very quick process. And then we wait there after everything is in touch to see if there's any reaction. And luckily for me there was nothing. It was like, oh, okay, it's done, you know, yeah. Johnson says he never doubted his decision to become a donor. I would encourage anyone that has an opportunity to join a registry to do that thing. But not just that, keep, keep uh, seeking opportunities to help others. That's, that's, what this, that's what makes this world a better place. A groundbreaking study in the United States with patients and donors who are not perfect matches is showing positive results. The Donor for All research helps to increase the odds greatly of finding life-saving treatment through the use of medication along with stem cell treatment. Example myself, I'm black African American and previously to find that perfect match I only had a 29% chance because of the natural genetic diversity of people who originated from Africa. Now we have an 84% chance with this donor for all research and just the tremendous opportunities and that's really at a seven of eights or at, you know one of the less identifying markers matching. If you go down several more you get up to 99% match so essentially it is changing the world in terms of that hope we spoke about, now everyone could potentially find their life-saving cure. Solo and Johnson's meeting was profound for both. They found they are connected beyond the medical procedure. We're on a spiritual level as well. We're joined from now on. So yes, I, I'm excited about his life because it gives me life. It gives me even more hope to do what I, I've been doing, to, to reach out to others and continue to to try to be a light, you know, in this dark world. Tsolo is in remission and is pursuing his career as a civil engineer with great joy.
Mariska Boota, ICBC News, Cape Town.